Good Monday morning, Market Chameleons, and everyone joining for the first time. Thanks for coming by and checking out the Market Chameleon pre-market show with this man, Dimitri Pogamonic. How you doing, D? Good morning, Will. How are you? Good. You want to start with the disclaimer? Yep. Good morning, everyone. Before we get started, keep in mind Will and I and Market Chameleon. We're not a registered investment advisor. We're not a broker dealer. We're not telling you what to do. We're just sharing ideas. If you need advice, call your registered investment advisor. Or call your broker. That's what they're there for. There's the disclaimer. Excellent. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen here. While I'm doing that, if you're joining us for the first time, Will and I, we do these shows in the morning to try to help answer questions you may have about the market chameleon tools, the data, or the analytics. If you have a question, type it into that live chat on YouTube. Will's watching it. He'll read them back to me. Um, and to give you guys a couple more minutes to put those questions in, we'll start out taking a look at the pre-market report, see if we could get some insights, what's going on in the pre-market hours, and then we'll move on to the questions. All right, so pre-market report. These are stocks trading in pre-market hours. Up top, we start out, we have this calendar view. That allows you to go back in time, if you wish, to see what happened in a pre-market on a historical date. Today, we're on January 22nd. So far, this is what's going on. We have 532 stocks trading higher in the pre-market. 347 stocks trading lower. As far as volume goes, we have 155 million shares trading on up volume versus 63 million on down volume. And if we convert that volume to dollar value, we have $4.4 billion worth of stock trading higher versus 800, almost $800 million worth of stock trading lower. From that perspective, it looks like the trades in a pre-market hours have a bullish lean. Let's look at it from a couple more perspectives, then we'll move on to questions. Um, I'm come down here, and now we have a list of stock symbols that are trading in the pre-market hours, and we could see here the volume, the price changes, um, an alert if there is news. Uh, we have a list of our most active stocks, our biggest percentage gainers, biggest percentage decliners, we see we got 105 stocks on our percentage gainers that made our biggest percentage gainers list and 82 on our decliners. So that also indicates a bullish lean um, in the pre-market trading. Now, to make this list, particular list, we do set certain thresholds regarding um the liquidity of this stock in the pre-market hours, the volume, the price changes, um, because things in a pre-market can be very illiquid or low volume. Um, and, you know, any stock that meets those thresholds, if it's a, if it's listed, if the stock is listed on a major U.S. exchange and it's trading in a pre-market hours, it can make this list. And to narrow it down to a smaller group, because you, you'll see here, we have small cap stocks in here, ETFs. It could be an inverse ETF. It could be a preferred stock. Um, and to narrow it down to a small group, we could use the filters above. If you have a watch list, you could use this filter here, and it will filter by your saved symbols in your watch list. Um, we're going to use this filter here in our example, an ETF. When you click on it, you get a drop down menu to choose from. I'm going to select SPY, which is the SP 500 ETF. So let's do that. And when we do that, the list below will get filtered by stocks that are holdings in the SPY ETF, which are the SP 500 constituents. And here we have, we see 12 stocks made our biggest percentage gainers, three on our biggest percentage decliners. So these are the S&P 500 stocks um, and that that also uh, signals that the, the trades in a pre-market, traders in a pre-market so far have uh, are trading with a bullish sentiment or bullish lean. Um, so we gave it a couple of minutes, Will. If you have a question, I'll, I'll take them now. Nothing's popped up, D. Okay. 
Um, so let me just jump to SPY. And, um, you know, a couple of things we were doing last week is trying to analyze options um, from the options chain. And we talked about um, what we did was, you know, so this is the options chain. And from the options chain, we said you could set up a different strategy and and then run your analysis right so you, if you have a str strategy in mind you have a certain perhaps outlook um and you could use options uh to uh, or combination of options uh to express that outlook so let's just say you if you think that the spy stock is going to have a big move from from now until this you know i pick january 26 expiration well there are lots of different ways you could strategize around that one way is like a straddle so straddle would be if you go to the at the money strikes you know so you know we got 482.43 and buy a straddle so buying buying a call and then buying a put Right. So now what we did was set up a strategy. It's a multi leg strategy. Um, and here you can see here buying the Jan 26, 482 call for 292, buying the Jan 26, 482 put for 240. So if we run that, now we get to see, you know, what that looks like at expiration. And this payout diagram will let us know, you know, where this strategy at expiration um, will lose and which where it will make, right? So different stock prices over here, down here. And this is, if you hover over it, it shows you the profit and loss. So if you're paying 532 for the straddle, the stock has to move by more than $5.32 away, right? This is what the graph is saying, away from the, at the money to be profitable, right? That, because that at, at that point, it will cover the cost of both the call and the put. Um, so we talked about, you know, why this payout diagram is is important is because one of your one of your analysis or assessments on a strategy is that you could at least visualize if this aligns with your outlook right because if you don't think if your if your you know research or or your outlook is that it's going to move by less than that then it wouldn't align with it, right? Because you, if you if you think it's going to move four dollars, like for example, um, and not likely to move five dollars, then then this wouldn't align, right? Because uh, you 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 would be paying too much. Um, so, but that so, what do we want to know? We want to know well, what's the potential the potential risks risk rewards right that's what we're trying to see there the potential risk rewards um and based on our and on our particular unique outlooks now sometimes you know you may have an outlook on it and you have this expiration but you want to know how does this look before these options expire right so so this is what this this strategy looks like at January 26 expiration. And it's pretty easy to run a options profit calculator if both of those options are expired because we will know at any given price, the option will be 
either in the money or out of the money. So if it's out of the money, it's going to expire worthless. So it's worth zero. If it's in the money, then the the options value will be the difference between you know the strike price and the stock price, right? Then the the intrinsic value. So that's at that's at expiration. We could draw. But what if we wanted to see if we held it for one or two days, right? Let's say we we held it till tomorrow or after tomorrow, but we had a few different assumptions um, in in that that maybe it will move a certain amount, or the implied volatility will change by a certain amount, right? So when we look at options before expiration, they're harder to price because they're not they're they're not expired so we can't just assign it a zero or, or intrinsic value that that option will have some time value okay so tomorrow right we we really do not know what these options will be worth because part of the calculation what they're worth is depends on where the implied volatilities are right so if implied volatility is at 20 they'll be worth a different value than if implied volatilities are 10 so that becomes more difficult or complex to try to price options um prior to expiration and we could run a profit calculator, but then we'll have to put some kind of an assumption in there that the implied volatilities will be at this level, right? Um, and we could change it to see how that curve looks like if we change the implied vols. So let's look at it from this perspective. What if the implied volatilities are exactly the same, right, as today? Let's say they're unchanged. They don't move. Well, if they're exactly the same, then there will be, you know, decay, right? The options will still have time decay, you know, so they're still going to change value. So even if the implied volatility is exactly the same, that doesn't mean that the option prices will be exactly the same tomorrow because they're going to decay. They're going to get closer and closer to expiration. Um. So let's see what that looks like. And we'll, we're going to draw on top of this graph, right, on top of this graph to see how a curve tomorrow looks like given the same implied volatility assumptions. How does it look like um, along these different prices? So to do that, I'm going to select a different date. So let's go to today's January 22nd. So let's go January 23rd. I'm going to select that. And now you see that dotted line? That's the estimated that uh, profit and loss. Tomorrow, um, you know, assuming that the implied volatilities are unchanged. So why so why is this dotted line below the zero? but it's not all the way down you know to where that red dot is right well if the options what is this telling us this graph is telling us well if the stock stays at exactly the same spot the options will decay right so now we're seeing we're going to expect it to lose 123 dollars in decay on these options right if by expiration we'll lose the 527 you know basically the whole thing so so tomorrow we could see i'm not hovering right at the strike but close to it so about 122 bucks um in decay tomorrow if we're basically unchanged and the implied vols are unchanged right so the stock's unchanged implied vols are unchanged that's where we're at and you could see that yes as you go further away right because this is a straddle as you go further away it'll get you know it'll become more and more profitable so this dotted line here what it's shown is that 
if we make a bigger move tomorrow, you see our break even is a little bit closer than at expiration, right? Because it still has some time value. Then it eventually just converges because the further it goes away, the less time premium it has, right? So if it's a very deep end of money, even though it has time to expiration, the more and more deep in the money it is, the less time premium. So that's what this dotted line is. But what if we try to change the assumption and say, well, the reason we're purchasing this implied vol or this straddle, one of the reasons is we think it has a potential move, but the implied vol is too low. What if we think that the volatility should pick up from today to tomorrow and it and it'll be up two clicks? Right. Let's say it's we don't think it should be 9.8. Let's assume we think it's going to be, you know, eleven point closer to twelve. That it's gotten it's gotten hit too too much and that it should, you know, maybe it'll get pushed higher. Well, what would that look like? All right, then, you know, how would this look like if it does get pushed to 12 and if, if it's worth the risk, right? Because if all you're doing is just breaking even at that point, you know, if it just offsets the cave, it might not be. So you have to kind of decide that. So let's so let's do that. We're going to pump up the implied vol and redraw this graph, all right? So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change these. I'm going to use this IV to change both of them, all right? So, so if you use these arrows instead of individually, you could. I'm going to use these arrows to change both of them. So I'm going to click. So you see here, I'm going to change these. I'm going to go up one and now up two, all right? So that's what we did. We changed the implied vol assumption. And I'm going to rerun. I'm going to recalculate it with a new implied vol assumption, but you know, at expiration, it's going to look the same because as we said, at expiration, it's not going to matter. It's either going to be out of the money or in the money. There's no time value once they expire. But what about on January 23rd? So I'm going to click on that. So now you see that if the stock is unchanged, if it's basically unchanged and implied volatility goes up two clicks, if that happens, then we're we're still losing just not as much, right? So it offsets some of the decay. So instead of $122, it looks like it's a $41 loss. Okay, so even two clicks doesn't really do any, you know, it, it helps, but it it's not going to make this strategy profitable if implied vol is up two clicks and we're unchanged, because the decay will be greater than you know it it, it it won't offset all the decay that's expected from this option. You know, but it helps, and your break even, you know, if the stock moves is closer, right? You don't need you don't need it to move as much. So you can see that that dotted line shifted, okay? But what if we thought the other way and let's say, let's go, I'm gonna look over here and you see how the implied volatility tends to move down as we get closer to expiration. So what does that tell us? If we look in, so we're looking over here, January 19th, January 22nd, January 23rd, 24th, these are the implied vols, 8.7, 9.5. So you could see that as you go out further in time, the implied volatility term structure is going up. But as you're getting, as this expiration gets closer, you know, as we get closer to the expiration date, the implied volatilities are sloping down. So if that's going to be, if we're going to be consistent on that, so let's go back to January 26 expiration. So let's do it from selling this straddle, right? 482, now I'm going to sell the straddle. Uh, hold on. 
let me uh let me start over because I got to buy and sell. So let's start from selling the straddle 482. So now we got selling January 26 482 call for 290 and selling the Jan 26 482 put for 238. Let's run that. So now I've reversed the strategy. And as you can see here, right, that being short the straddle, you want the stock to sit here. And this is at expiration, you know, ideally if it's right at the strike and they both expire worthless, you keep that credit. But let's assume that we want to see what does this look like tomorrow if there's just decay and nothing changes. Right, so now we're reversing. So what is it going to look like if it's just tomorrow and nothing changes? So you could see here that blue line. If implied volatilities remain exactly the same, so 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 far we didn't we didn't assign it a sloping down. We just said if it just stays the same, which doesn't look like that's what it does, right? But it remained the same see this little blue line over here showing us it's about a if it, if the stocks here these options are expected to decay by a hundred twenty dollars right so if you sold that straddle 120 in one day but let's say we thought okay not only that what if what if they do if the that downward sloping term structure, right, remains consistent, right? If that if that's consistent, well, then these options then should decline in implied volatility. Implied volatility should decline tomorrow, right? So how does that look? What if the implied volatility did decline tomorrow or the day after? And we could see here, you know, it's not a lot, 0. 0.1. So, you know, I'd have to move it down by here, 0. 0.1, 0. 0.1 on each side. So how does that look? If all it did was go down 0. 0.1 or, you know, 0. 0.2. What did I say from, yeah, so, so 0. 0.1. Okay, so let's recalculate that. And now we're going to come down here. And remember, this is at expiration. So we want to see what does it look like tomorrow. So now I'm hovering over it. And it didn't do much, maybe a little bit. So that that is not a large vega, right? We don't have a large vega in this in this and and uh, you know, one tenth of a percent. It's not a big move down. Let's see if we moved it down a whole click. So let me see, you know, by expiration, you can see a little something. So let's move it down one click. So I'm going to use this to move both of these down one click. All right, 8.7. So what if implied vol went down by one click? Let's look at that. I'm going to recalculate it. Now we want to see tomorrow what that would look like. So you can see this blue line shifted higher now. So if that happens, this would be instead of a $120 um, winner, it would be 161. So basically what we did was we made two assumptions here, right? That one day goes by, the stock doesn't move that much. So we're gonna, so the options are gonna decay plus the implied volatility comes in one click. Um, and this is what it would look like in theory, you know, using an options profit capital. Of course, if it moves, then then it's a different story, right? So this is where your profit and loss is one day away. If we did two days, January 24th, this is what it looks like. So I think that in this demonstration, what we wanted to do was expand on the options profit calculator to say if we wanted to compare the the 
you know, payout diagram at expiration to a payout diagram prior to expiration. We could run that analysis. However, in that analysis, we will have to make assumptions about where we think the implied volatilities will be um, on that date. Okay, because that's what matters is where do you think the implied volatility will be, you know, the days before expiration. So hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys found that helpful. Helpful. That was awesome, D. Great job, my friend. Okay. Well, everyone, stay safe out there. Have a great trading day. We only have, you know, we're almost at 930. So I guess we'll end it here. Yep. We're four well, minutes out. Awesome job, buddy. Have a